say this is God's holy word. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Holy men of old wrote. Moved upon by the Holy Spirit. No scriptures of individual interpretation. But the Holy Spirit will make it come alive. I will hear. And I will bear fruit. And I will see the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Speak to us, O oh God. Change our lives. Right, let's go to James chapter 5 and let's just read. And as Peter read, I'm going to write, start with verse 15. Peter, James chapter 5, verse 15. Let's see what God wants to say to us this afternoon. And the prayer that is of faith will okay. save him. Uh, the thing there is prayer. Okay. There's a prayer and this prayer is of faith. You see, many people pray, but their prayer is not of faith. Yeah. If, if you just pray, I mean... It, it, you don't get results. There is a prayer of faith, right? Go. That will save him who is sick, mm -hmm. and the Lord will restore him. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess to one another, therefore, your faults. This is now verse 16. Listen. Your, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also for one another, that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest. Okay, listen to this. The earnest. This is not earnest go to the army. That's an E-A. E the earnest. Heartfelt. Heartfelt. Continued. The earnest. Heartfelt. Continued. Prayer of a righteous man. Okay, so we're talking about the prayer of faith. It must be earnest. It must be heartfelt. It must be continued. And the man that offers this prayer must be righteous. Right? Let's go. Makes tremendous power. Okay, now, now, if there's a man that prays the prayer of faith and he's earnest, his heart is in it, he continues, and this man is righteous. That prayer makes, read it, makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its tremendous work. Tremendous power available. Available, yes. Dynamic in its working. Dynamic in its working. We all know it, but sometimes if you just say it and write it, say it and write it, it drops into your heart and says something. It, ma it makes dynamic in, in its working. Elijah was a human okay. being. Okay. Then it says, Elijah was a human being subject to like passions as us, and he prayed that it should not rain. And for a span of three years and six months, it did not rain, and he prayed again, and the, and the heavens opened, and rain came. Yeah. Right? So just look at that. It says, there is a prayer of faith. There's many people that pray, but you can just as well scratch it because it's not prayer. If you haven't got an answer, I say it to the students week after week after week. Now, I know it's tough, and I've been on it now for this whole year. I say, if you don't get an answer, you didn't pray. Now, people say, well, how can you say that? Well, if you, if you didn't get an answer, you didn't pray. What is prayer? Prayer is asking from God to receive. So there is a prayer of faith. But there are certain qualities in this prayer. It must be earnest. It must be heartfelt. It means your heart must be, there must be a feeling in your heart when you pray that, wow, I'm actually talking to the living God. It must be a continued thing. But the man that offers this prayer of faith must be a righteous man. And that prayer of the righteous man that is earnest and heartfelt will make tremendous power available. And this power that will now be made available will be dynamic in its working. Okay, can I, can I, can I, can I just put something here at the bottom that is in the Psalms, it says, Selah. That means pause and think on that for a while. How would you like to pray and then there's power available, which is very dynamic and it's working. 
It means after you prayed and people come into your area, whoever comes into your area is touched because power has been made available. What do you think happened when Peter walked down the streets and they carried the people out so that his shadow just fell on the sick? Did he pray for them there? No, he prayed before he got there. Come on, church, what do you think? What happened when they sent the cloths and the handkerchiefs of Paul to the sick? Did he pray over the cloths? Is it just because he prayed that the tremendous power was made available? How is it that people come into your place and say, church, you can sense God in this place? How is it that you walk past someone and you get goosebumps all over you? How is it that somebody touches you and you get healed without that man praying for you? So it's not because he prayed then, it's because he prayed somewhere. And that some way where he prayed has made a tremendous power available. And that power is now available where that man is. And that power that's available is dynamic in its power. So how would you like to have such a prayer life? You can pray last night. And you can walk here and touch her. And just by greeting her, she gets healed. And she said, When you touched me, I was healed because tremendous power was made available. That's so dynamic in power because a righteous man prayed the prayer of faith. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed in and trusted in God and it was accredited to his account as righteousness. Okay. Abraham believed God and that made him righteous. Come on, people, you've heard this thousands of times, but let something drop in your heart that you've maybe... Abraham believed God, and God says, you're righteous. I want to try it again. It may sound so... so. I know that. Do you know it? Abraham believed. God said, Abraham, get out of your land, out of your country, to the land that I will show you. Abraham said, yes, let's go. God says, you're righteous. Okay, right, read. (laughs) Now to a laborer, his wages are not counted as a favor or a gift. Now listen to these words. If you are a laborer, I mean you're working for a boss, the wages you get at the end of the month has got nothing to do with faith. You worked for it. (laughs) Can I try it again? You don't need faith to get your salary. You worked for it. Let's try it again. You don't need faith to get your salary. You worked for it. Oh, I got so much faith. The end of the month, I'm going to get a salary. I know you don't need faith for a salary you worked. Okay. But as an obligation, something owed to him. But to one who, not working by the law, trusts, believes fully in him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. Uh, No, 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 no. Peter, read a bit with more emphasis on that last bit. But to one who, not working by the law, trusts and believes fully in him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. Now he says, if somebody doesn't trust in the law, but he believes God can set the ungodly free. That believing that the ungodly can be freed by an almighty God, which is called grace, that man is now righteous. I mean, this is stuff we know, but God must put some emphasis on it. We need to get more answers to prayers. He says, so if you work for something, of course you're going to get something. But if you believe that I can't work to be righteous, I must believe in him that sets the ungodly free because of grace, a cross where blood was shed. God says, you're righteous. Right? Thus, David congratulates the man and pronounces a blessing on him to whom God credits righteousness apart from the work he does. Blessed and happy and to be envied are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered up and completely buried. Blessed and happy and to be envied is the person whose sin the Lord will take no account nor reckon it against him. Is this blessing or happiness then meant only for the circumcised or also for the uncircumcised? 
we say that faith was credited to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it credited to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? Was it not after, but before he was circumcised? He received the mark of circumcision as a token or an evidence and seal of the righteousness which he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. Faith. So, I, I don't want to talk on everything, but I want you to see God said he's got nothing to do with the law, circumcision, uncircumcision, rituals, rules, regulations. It's when he said, yes, Lord, God said you're righteous. But if you want a token and a sign, Abraham, let's get some circumcision there. Let you just know that you've got contact with me. But if you don't want it, you're still righteous. Can I help you? Abraham was not a Jew. Right, let's go on. Faith so that Can I help you more? (laughs) Abraham had a son. His name was Isaac. Isaac had a son. His name was Jacob. Jacob wrestled with God. And God changed his name to Israel. Thank you. Faith so that he was to be made the father of all who truly believe. Though without circumcision. And who thus have righteousness. Right standing with God. Imputed to them. And credited to their account. As well as that he be made the father of those circumcised persons who are not merely circumcised, but also walk in the way of that faith which our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. When did he have the faith? Before he was circumcised. When when was he made righteous? Before he was circumcised. Right. For the promise to Abraham or his posterity that he should inherit the world did not come through observing the commands of the law, but through the righteousness of faith. How did Abraham get a promise that he would inherit the earth? Because the righteousness that he received, because he believed. Right? If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, then faith is made futile and empty of all meaning, and the promise of God is made void, is annulled, and has no power. For the law results in divine wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression of it either. Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor. Look at this. All God's promises. All God's promises. All God's promises are of faith. That is of grace. That is no law. That means you can't work for it. You just got to believe. So the promises are of faith. So the prayer of faith. Get the promises because the man who believed are now righteous. And the man that is righteous makes tremendous power available, which is dynamic in its working when he prays. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He he was appointed our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existent things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. Okay. The King James says, because Abraham believed God that can call things that, help me everybody, that are not as though they not shall be the believing that made Abraham righteous is Abraham believed that God, God can call things that are not as though they already were. You see, we want to call things that shall be. I want to say that again. We want to call things to be. Abraham believed God called things as though they were. 
the prayer of faith that comes from a righteous man is to this effect that God, Abraham's belief that made him righteous is that God calls things that are not as though they were. So it's going into the past like it already is and just bringing into the present because God is, I am. Before the foundation of the earth was laid, there is, I am. Before there was a sickness, I was healed. Before there was a problem, it was solved. Before there was a situation, it was changed. Before there was a circumstance, it was turned about. Come on, church. Before there was a problem, it was already solved. This is nothing new. But just putting emphasis on a few words will maybe help us. The prayer of faith that comes from a righteous man will make tremendous power available, which will be so dynamic in its working because all these promises are of faith because you can believe that God can call anything that are not as though they already were. God knew exactly how the cars would look in 2003. Before there was a zero year. God knew exactly which satellites would reach the moon before there was a moon. God knew exactly where this building would stand before there was a drive-in theater. But you see, if we tap into it, in 1982, we, we, we were in Vendorland, missionaries to the Vendor people. Excited to work for God. We just got our working permits. We struggled a year to get our working permits. And we wanted to work in Vendorland. We had no idea ever to come back to South Africa. We're going to work in Vendorland. And just as we got our working permits with our photos on, now we are accredited missionaries to the Vendor people. Here I go to bed. And I dream about a drive-in theater. Outside a small city, close to a bigger city, with a building. With a tent next to the highway, close to the drive-in theater. People, it was no struggle seven years later to come walk on this ground. And the people that were with us, like Donnie and Vessel and those people, this is how we built this church. I stood on that corner without a tape measure. I walked it off. I said, put the first peg in here, the other peg in there, the other peg in there, and this is where we're going to have church. How? Because I saw it in 82. But God saw it before there was a creation. But he was waiting for somebody that could be righteous to pray a prayer of faith that will make tremendous power available, that can call things that are not as though they were, and here you're sitting. But no, 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 we, we will not think like it. Imagine all the dreams you've dreamed, visions you saw, ideas you had. Imagine if you will take it serious today. And realize you're righteous. Imagine what can happen in the next week. God is not bankrupt. I don't care. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what type of business you're in. And I don't care who owes you anything. I don't care how sick you are if you're standing with one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana peel. I don't care. I don't care. God has got all the resources and all the power available to make you healthy in a split second. To raise you up today that you will stand like you've never been sick. But are we prepared to call it? He says, uh, but for those who work according to the law. Remember there in Romans chapter 4? He says, uh, they can't trust in righteousness. Because they worked for it. They can't believe for a salary because they earned it. Remember? Galatians 4. Thank you, Peter. 
Now what I mean is that as long as the inheritor or heir is a child. Now remember Romans 4 says God promised to Abraham that he would be heir of the world. And he would be the father of many nations that would be heirs of the world. A child and under age, he does not differ from a slave, although he is the master of all the estate. I mean, I mean, if a little baby lies in a pram, yeah. one day he will be the master of the estate. Right. They will call him Lord. Oh, yeah. 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 show, my Lord. <laughs> but he's a baby. So he differs nothing from the person that cleans his room. Right. But he is under guardians and administrators. Okay. He is under guardians. That word guardians is a few words in the Bible. He is under guardians, which is schoolmasters, which is teachers. He's under guardians, schoolmasters, and teachers. Right. Until the date fixed by his father. Okay, there's a fixed date. There's a fixed date. So, say, say he referred to a lot of people, but he's talking to me now. Okay, so we. Okay. When we were minors. When we were minors. In other words, when we were not of age. We were not of place of, 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 where we could get the estate. Where they didn't call us Lord. Where they didn't give us the keys to the car. Where they didn't give us the keys to the gate to the estate. We were lying in the pram where we differed nothing from a slave. When we were minors. We were kept, right. We're kept like slaves under the rules of the Hebrew ritual and subject to the elementary teachings. Okay, the King James Bible said we were kept under the law. Okay, so this, this year is the law. Right? But when the proper time had fully come. Oh, there's a fixed date which he now calls a proper time. Holy Spirit, help. There's a fixed date determined by the person who says someday the miner will become the heir and he will get the estate. So there's a proper time when this fixed date will now be come to fulfillment. Right? God sent his son. Oh, help. Listen. At the proper time. At the fixed date, what happened? What happened? God send his son. Born of a woman. Okay, now let's pick this up there. God sent his son. He was born of a woman. Born subject to the law. The King James Bible says under. The Amplified says subject. Okay, so here is the law. Let's make it like a, a measuring stick, a ruler. It's a law. It tells you, this is how far you can go. This is what you can't do. This is what you can't do. And Christ was born under that law, subject to that law. Right. Purchase the freedom of those who were subject to okay, the law. Okay, listen. He was born like that to purchase our freedom. That we might be adopted and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. Galatians chapter 3. Oh, you poor and silly and thoughtless and unreflecting and senseless Galatians. Oh, aren't you glad my name is not Paul? 
Imagine I'm preaching here and say, oh, you stupid, senseless, thoughtless, idiotic people. <laughs> Thank God my name is not Paul. Right, listen. Who is fascinated or bewitched or cast a spell over you? Unto whom, right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ the Messiah was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified? Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as Let a result? Let me ask you this one question. Look this way. I want to ask you this question. Church, let me ask you this question. By TV, look straight in my face. Make sure your mascara is in the right place. I want to ask you this one question. Right, go. Listen to the question, sir. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law? Did you get the Holy Spirit because you worked? Now remember, Romans says, if you worked, you earned it. And you can't lay claim on faith or righteousness or belief. Let's try it again. If you worked, you can't lay hold or claim righteousness Faith or believe. So did you work to get the Holy Spirit? Right. Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? So how does faith come? Yeah. Romans ten seventeen By hearing. How does faith come? By hearing. How does faith come? By hearing. By hearing what? The word. So what are you hearing today? The word. So are you so foolish and so senseless and so silly? Having begun that is your in plain language, are you so stupid? Right? Having begun your new life spiritually with the Holy Spirit, are you now reaching perfection by dependence upon the flesh? Come Have on, you come on, come on. We've heard a lot about let us go on to perfection. Let us all of us the, the, of one mind, let us be perfect. Perfect. Amen. Let us go on to perfection. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. You can't work to be perfect. Right. You can't suffer and strain to be perfect. Yes. You must live in the Spirit to come to perfection. Uh, you must believe God to come to perfection. Yes, you must take the promises of God to come to perfection. Too many people want to labor to come to perfection. And you know what you get? You become a religious idiot. Yeah. <laughs> And you'll put people off of the gospel. You see them all the time. Have you suffered so many things and experienced so much all for nothing? If it, is, if it really is to no purpose and in vain, then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you do so on the grounds of your doing what the Lord demands or because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard? Thus Abraham believed in and adhered to and trusted in and relied on God, and it was reckoned and placed to his account and credited as righteousness. Read those last two verses again. Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous... He who supplies you. I want you to just get that word supply. Remember in Galatia, in, 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 in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 where he says, It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Remember, the Amplified says, the supply. This, it's not by might, not by power, but by the ceaseless supply. The ceaseless supply of the spirit of which the oil is the symbol. He who supplies. In days of war, you go to the stores to get some supplies. To go to the field. God wants to supply you. With your daily need of the Holy Spirit. Go read Zechariah 4 for homework. There's the, the, the olive trees. 
And there's the oil flowing into the seven lamb stands, the ceaseless supply, which makes you to be able. We need a supply, right? Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously How among you. How does he work in you? Powerfully. So there's a dynamic power available. And God wants to work powerfully in you by the supply of the Holy Spirit. I want you to see how these scriptures just mingle into each other. The supply of the Holy Spirit brings a power available, man. It's dynamo, dynamic, dynamite, power. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Greek word, tunamos which comes from a dynamo that turns, that brings power, that brings the word dynamite, explosive, Holy Ghost, turbo. Thank you. Right. Works powerfully among you. Do so on the grounds of your doing what the Lord demands or because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard. Okay. Now all this, all this, come on church, all this that we now talked about, all this that we now talked about, is it because you work according to the law? Or is it because you believed and that made you righteous? It's easy to say yes, but we can, can we take some inventory today and see how many times before you get it, you're back in the law? You're trying to twist the arm of God, trying to impress God. You've got to believe. And righteousness will be your portion. And the prayer of a righteous man will put much power available. Thus Abraham believed in and adhered to and trusted in and relied on God. And it was reckoned and placed to his account and credited as righteousness. Oh, come on, people. Come on, come on. We've heard this for the last 25 years over and over and over. Genesis 12 to 17. Romans 3, 4, 5, and 6. Galatians 3 and 4. We've heard it and we've heard it and we've heard it. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And it's the prayer of a righteous man that puts dynamic power available. Yes. Amen. Oh Lord, what can I do? He says, nothing. Lord, how much more must I pray? He said, maybe less. <laughs> but something must have happened that the miracles are increasing like this. And most of the times it's not a prayer. Most of the times it's just a, a looking at the people, a touching, because the dynamic power that's available is supposed to hang all around us. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify, declare righteous, and put in right standing with himself, the Gentiles, in consequence of faith, proclaimed the gospel for telling the glad now tidings. Now listen to this. God foreseeing that you would get this righteousness before preach this gospel to Abraham. God foresaw that you're going to be here. So long before you were here, he long before that. God foresaw. He was foreseeing that you would be here. That's why before he preached this thing to Abraham. So that you can learn a lesson from Abraham. So Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord left on Father Abraham. Remember, had many sons, 
Many sons had father. All right, light Peter, read. Proclaimed the gospel to Abraham in the promise, saying, In you shall all the nations of the earth be oh. blessed. Oh. Oh. Say, if God says all, oh, it seems like I'm included. Come on, say it. If God says all, oh, it seems like I'm included. Right, go. So then, those who are people of faith are blessed and made happy and favored by God as partners in fellowship with a believing and trusting Abraham. So you become what Abraham had. Read. And all who depend on the law are under a curse. Oh and my goodness. But if you want to be under the law, you're under a curse. And doomed to disappointment and destruction. And doomed to disappointment. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed, accursed, devoted to destruction, doomed to oh, no. eternal oh, punishment. No. You are devoted to destruction. <laughs> you are devoted to destruction if you don't want to take the righteousness which is of faith and you want to go back to the law, you are devoted to destruction. Read Colossians 2. Keeping all ablutions and rules and regulations of the law. Oh, Galatians 3 says, watch out, you've got no part in Christ. You can't act one day, can't put one day above another day. But I want to tell you, Jesus died to get you out of that legalistic law thing. To make you believe so that you can be righteous, so that you can have much power available when you pray. Dynamic and it's working. So that when you say Jesus, he will say yes. But some people cry weeks and it seems like God is in Taiwan and is not prepared to visit South Africa. Come on, South Right, go on, Peter. Doomed to eternal punishment. Oh, God. Be everyone who does not continue to abide and live and remain by all the precepts and command written in the book of law and to practice them. Now, it is evident that no person is justified or declared righteous and brought into right standing with okay, God. Okay, 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 please. It is evident. It is evident that no person. It is evident that no person can get righteousness by the law. It is evident no person can get righteousness by the law. So why do you want to do it? For the scripture says, the man in right standing with God shall live by and out of faith. And he who through and by faith is declared righteous and in right standing with God shall live. But the law does not rest on faith, does not require faith, has nothing to do you with faith. You don't need faith for the law. For it is its itself, says, he who does them, the things prescribed by the law, shall live by them, not by faith. Christ purchased our freedom, redeeming us from the curse and the doom of the law and its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. To the end that through the receiving Christ Jesus, the blessing promised to Abraham might come upon the Gentiles so that we through faith might all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if we should go on to this. But think of some of the things you want to get victory over. How hard do you try to get victory over, victory over it? Let's just be honest. Smoking. Drinking, TV programs, horrible books, terrible addictions. How have you tried to get rid of it? I don't want to go on that route because that's not our sermon for today. And how many got the victory? No one. So if you want to work to get victory... You can't get it. 
So why don't you go to the one that's called Savior, Redeemer, Friend, Lover, Blesser. Says, you know what, son? You know what, daughter? If you would believe me, I will make you righteous. If you are then righteous, you can then pray. If you then pray, much power is set available. That power is so dynamic and it's working. You will stop doing what you're doing. But no, 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 no. I'm not going to smoke again. This is my last. How many last were your last? Your last was so lost that it's still lost. <laughs> it's all right to laugh if you haven't smoked. Or any other addiction. Brother, I used to break them. I used to jump on them. And in the morning I would see, can I not scratch them together? <laughs> pair a piece of paper, tear a piece of paper out of the telephone book. Roll another zol and smoke it again. Oh, Jesus, help me. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to do it. 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 And when you get it, there you sit doing it again. And then halfway you say, oh, you're, oh, why am I doing it again? Because you try to get legalistically free. I don't know how to explain it. It's a revelation that must drop in your heart. That the righteous shall live by faith. But it's faith that makes you righteous. Simply to the cross I cling. No good thing I can bring. Remember? All other grounds are sinking sand. Right? What can I do? You know what we need? We need one vision of the cross. Just one vision. Just one vision. One revelation. But I had a vision last week. I said, Jesus... There's got to be more to the fact that you said, if the Son has set you free, come and quote it. If the Son has set you free, you shall be free indeed. Then I asked Jesus, how? This is what I saw last week must have been Tuesday, Wednesday. I said, God, what does it mean when you said, if the Son has set you free, you shall be free indeed. And I saw Jesus hanging on the cross, just a split second. And I heard from his lips, Father, forgive them. I don't care if you're touched or not touched. I want to be touched. I want to be a person where... Tremendous power are available, which will be so dynamic in its working. I don't want to pray for a sick and see them leaving sick. I don't want to pray for a problem and see the problem stay there. Church, we had 2,000 years to grow up. Don't you think it's time for us to grow up? So Christ has redeemed us from that curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So that we can now receive the blessings of Abraham and the promised Holy Spirit by faith. Read on. To speak in terms of human relations, brethren, if even a man makes a last will and testament, no one sets it aside or makes it void or adds to it once it has been drawn up and signed. Now the promises were decreed and made to Abraham and his seed. He, God, does not say, and to seeds, as if referring to many persons, but and to your seed, 
obviously referring to one individual who is none other than Christ, the Messiah. This is my argument. The law, which began 430 years after the covenant concerning the coming Messiah, does not and cannot annul the covenant previously established or ratified by God, so as to abolish the promise and make it void. The promises were made to the seed. He does not say to seeds as to many, but one that is of Christ. Which is it? All the promises are made to the seed. Just read quickly, Peter. Now the promises were decreed and made to Abraham and his seed, his offspring, his heir. And he, God, does not say, and to seeds, as if referring to many persons, but, and to your seed, your descendant, your heir, obviously referring to one individual who is none other than, than Christ the Messiah. So how does he refer to Christ? He refers to the Christ on the cross because that's the context of Galatians 3. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So the promises came to the cross. That was where the dividing line came. On this side the law, on that side the promises. On this side it was works, on that side it's the grace of Almighty God. So it had to be the cross of Christ that brought this thing. Okay, read, 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 read. This is my argument. The law which began 430 years after the covenant does not and cannot annul the covenant. Obviously. Okay, so the law cannot annul or make finish or get rid of the promises that was beforehand beforehand made to Abraham that foresaw that you're going to have the promises. So in between came the law. But this law could not make these promises that would come later of no effect. The law was there for a period as a guardian, schoolmaster, a teacher. Somebody help me. So the law was added from before to foreseen. So there's the law. So here they couldn't get it. Here was the righteousness, which was of faith. And here again is the righteousness, which is of faith. But the law cannot get one of the two. So Abraham had it. Now we've got to go back here. Okay, Peter, quickly. For if the inheritance of the promise depends on observing the law, as these false, false teachers would like you to believe. False teachers. It no longer depends. False teachers. False teachers. False teachers. If they come and say the law, say false. If they come and say seventh day, false. Sabbath day, false. Yahweh, false. God is not so stupid as not to give us a name that we can use in our language, man. You're not Arabic, Aramic, or Greek. There's no more slave, neither free man, neither Jew nor Greek. Thank you. It no longer depends on the promise. However, God gave it to Abraham as a free gift solely by virtue free, of his promise. Free, free, I promise. Go. What then was the purpose of the law? It was added later now, on. Now, what then was the purpose of the law? It was added. After the promise... To disclose and expose to men their guilt and the sinfulness of sin. And it was intended to be in effect until the seed, the descendant, the heir, should come. To and concerning whom the promise had been made. Okay, what does the King James says? Wherefore then serveth the law. It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand okay. of a mediator. Now, a go-between has to do with and implies with more than one party. There can be no mediator with just one person. Yet God is only one person, and he was the sole party in giving the, that promise to Abraham. But the law was a contract between two, God and Israel. Its validity was dependent. The law was a contract between? 
God and Israel. God and Israel. So what are you? South African, Corsas, Zulus, Tswanas, English. Okay, thank you. Is the law then contrary and opposed to the promises of God? Of course not. If a law had been given which could confer spiritual life, then righteousness and right standing with God would certainly have come by law. But the scriptures picture all mankind as sinners, shut up and imprisoned by sin, so that the inheritance and blessing which was promised through faith in Jesus Christ might be given, released, delivered, and committed to all those who believe, who, who adhere to and trust in and rely on Him. Now, before the faith came... Okay, we, now this is where you've got to look. Before the faith that made you righteous, that can make you pray a prayer, that will make tremendous power available. Before that came, we were all kept under that guardian, Right? We were kept in custody in preparation for the faith that was destined to be revealed so that the law served to us Jews as our trainer, our okay, guardian. King James? As Wherefore a schoolmaster. the law who was our schoolmaster to okay, bring us the schoolmaster, the teacher, right. But now that the faith has come. Now that faith has come. We, we don't not, need the law. We are not. Under, now look at this. That word, schoolmaster. Guardian, teacher, in the Greek, is the following word. When the fullness of time came, we had it there, the fixed date, the proper time. Remember? God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, under the law. So, here was the law. Christ was born under the law, which was the teacher, the schoolmaster. The word in the Greek is the following, a stick. That supports. The tree. Till it is grown. Now. Christ was born under the stick. So you have a stick and the tree grows and you put a little rope around it. And the tree grows and you put a little rope around it. You make the tree grow and you put a little rope on it. When the tree grows strong enough, you take the stick away. Now listen, listen. This may sound like nothing to you. But he grew up as a tender plant out of dry ground. And there shall be one who will be called the branch. Who hath believed our report and to whom was the arm of the Lord revealed. He grew up as a tender plant. Who hath believed our report? Who hath believed? So in the fullness of time when Christ was born under the law. So we had to grow alongside the law till the time when he come and he was of full age. And he said, I think it's time that which I came for must now happen. 